When Porsche introduced the new 911 last year, the 991.2, they gave it all sorts of new stuff, a new suspension, new technology, a new interior, even a new look. But really, everybody only talked about one thing, the new turbochargers. Yes, basically every new 911 has a pair of the things giving more power and more efficiency. And at the time, that made me wonder, how is Porsche going to make the capital T turbo, the 911 turbo, still a special car? And we're about to find out. This is that new car, the new 911 turbo, and we're going to put it through its paces on the road and on the track. The new turbo uses basically the same 3.8 liter engine augmented by dual turbochargers just like before, but now making 20 more horsepower thanks to a series of tweaks. That means 540 for the base turbo and 580 for the S. Those impellers use variable geometry to enable them to spool quickly and deliver lots of airflow at high RPM, but Porsche has taken another step to reduce lag, keeping the throttle valve open slightly even when you're off throttle. It's not quite the proper anti-lag system you see on a rally car, but the combination is impressively effective. The increase in power means the car now hits 60 miles per hour officially in just 2.8 seconds and screams on up to 205 miles an hour. But despite that, it offers 10% better fuel economy than before. All right, we're in car in the new turbo, and I'm actually surprised at how different it feels from the standard Carrera, which I spent a lot of time in not too long ago. It's actually a lot more hardcore, a little bit more stiff. The suspension is firmer. It's a little louder in here, too. I think a lot of that's thanks to the extra width we've got in the rear tires to put all that power down. And you kind of need it, too. We're in the 911 Turbo S, which has the additional power and some other nice needs added, too. And frankly, if you're spending this much money on a Porsche Turbo, you probably might as well go for the S and get all the extra niceties along with the ride. But this isn't quite the Grand Tour, not quite the plushy ride that you might have expected if you've driven other turbos in the past. We do have adaptive suspension, so right now it's in its softest mode, but turn the little mode knob here and you can go into Sport. And then all the way up to Sport Plus, suddenly the baffles and the exhaust open up, the transmission gets a little more aggressive and... It uh, certainly sounds pretty good in here, but again, this isn't quite the relaxed, calm ride that you might expect from a proper Grand Tour. It's a little bit of a hardcore edge. It certainly is pushing you to go faster all the time. And when you want to go really fast in a hurry, hit the new Sport Response button on the steering wheel. This gives you 20 seconds of additional boost, meaning even the tightest of passing zones are plenty generous. But even while sitting still, the car looks fast and clean with new lights and a redesigned front fascia, cleaner rear bumper, and a new rear deck lid that features a delicious assortment of vents and louvers. If that weren't cool enough, both the front splitter and the rear wing extend at speed for additional downforce. And there's plenty of changes to be found on the inside, too. Now, thankfully, the new turbo inherits all the new niceties that have been brought to the 911 that we saw first in the Carrera. So the interior is much refined over what we've seen in the past. There are a lot fewer buttons. It's a lot simpler interface. We've got this great new infotainment system that Porsche brought to the table, which does add Apple CarPlay connectivity, which is really great if you are an iPhone user. Sadly, there's no Android Auto yet. Porsche's kind of indicated that we might be seeing that soon but nothing just yet. But overall, it's beautiful materials in here, as you'd expect. I've got an Alcantara line steering wheel and a headliner. Great materials, chrome buttons. The only bit of a bummer is the cheap plastic feel on this knob as you go for the mode dials. It feels like something on a PlayStation controller, which is a little bit, uh, a little bit less than you'd expect on a car that costs well into the six figures. But overall, this is a really great place to be, a very comfortable place to be, and a very nice car to drive on the road. But Porsche says that this is not just a car for the road. This is something for the track, too. There's only one way to find out about how good it's going to do there. That's to hit the track. All right, we talked about how the turbo is on the road. Now it's time to find out how it does on the track. I'm in a Turbo S at the moment. I've also been out here in a non-S turbo with a little less power. This one's got all the goodies, the carbon ceramic brakes, the center lock wheels, and, of course, the extra power that you would uh, expect out of the S. We're at Thunder Hill in uh, Northern California, which is... A track with a lot of elevation changes. There are certainly tracks with more elevation change than this one, but you're constantly moving up and down out here, so I hope you don't get car sick. Thunder Hill is a fantastic and challenging circuit in Northern California. Being pretty far from the coast, temperatures can climb and climb, as they did on this day when the dashboards in the cars were showing 104 degrees. Thank goodness for air-conditioned seats. All these elevation changes do a lot to unsettle the car, which it's actually a really good proving ground for this car because it is so big, but it feels so incredibly planted and stable as we're going over hills and cutting over cambered corners. 
it just feels impeccably planted, more so than just about anything else I've driven. The power is immense, and despite this being such a stable car, it's actually incredibly nimble. The rear wheel steering really makes it feel like it's got a shorter wheelbase than it does. You turn into a corner, and you can feel the rear end just come right around. It's absolutely amazing, especially for an all-wheel drive car to be this quick to dive toward the apex. It's unbelievable. And you just put your foot to the power, and it comes right out of the corner. And Oh man, is this good. This is a really good car. This is a big car to head out on the track like this, especially on a hot day like today. But uh, it's handling it really, really well. I don't want to stop. But I do want to stop talking, so uh, hope you'll excuse me for a few moments while I have a little bit more fun out here. I not only spent around four hours pounding around the track in the triple digit heat, I then drove a further three hours back to the hotel, in the same car which was none the worse for wear. That is impressive stuff. If you have any preconceptions about the 911 Turbo being anything less than a really serious sports car, one lap on the track in this thing will pretty quickly change your mind. It is of course preposterously fast, but it's also ridiculously capable. It's an incredible car. But with a starting price of $159,000, you kind of would expect it to be. That said, compare that to the price of a Ferrari or a competitive Italian Exotica, and you'll see this thing's actually pretty good value for money.